Hey, Grace Dill Nation, Sully here with the Barbell Prescription, keeping you strong and healthy in the second half of life. Thanks for watching and subscribing. A few months ago, I got this question via email from a client, a retired federal law enforcement agent. Ancillary exercises other than the prowler. I realize our C-19 time limitations impact these extras, but how do you assess the need for Ancelex and their effects on MAs? Translation, do I have to push the damn sled? I know it's hard to have time for conditioning during COVID restrictions, and what is the real need for conditioning in Masters athletes? There's actually a lot to unpack here, and I don't just mean the overuse of acronyms and portmanteau so pathognomonic of GEED. First, I'm not sure I'd call the prowler, or more generically, the sled, an ancillary exercise. Like most of my colleagues, my enterprise carries a strength and conditioning appellation because Conditioning is part of what we do. It's not ancillary. It's part of the whole kit and caboodle. So how do we assess the need for conditioning, or ancillex for heaven's sake, in masters? Easy. Everybody needs conditioning work. The question is, how do they get it? During the novice phase of training, when we're focused like a laser beam on gaining strength in the squat, press, bench, and dead, the conditioning prescription is easy. We do the squat, press, bench, and dead. Warm-ups and work sets take place in the anaerobic energy system and will seriously tax your work capacity and drive up your heart rate. And between sets, you'll tax your aerobic energy system to recharge your anaerobic energy system. Deconditioned and sedentary masters will improve their stamina and aerobic metabolism just by warming up and doing work sets at ever-increasing loads with these exercises. Now, people who are already heavily conditioned may see some mild aerobic deconditioning during their novice phase, even as they observe massive increases in strength, but not much, especially if we throw in some prowler pushes in the middle of the LP. But what to do when the LP is drawing to a close and the conditioning benefits of just lifting are starting to pay diminishing returns? What is the conditioning prescription for the athlete of aging? This is covered in some detail in the barbell prescription, but to summarize, our conditioning modality must meet all of the exercise medicine criteria. It must be safe, have a wide and titratable therapeutic window, be comprehensive across energy systems, and be simple and effective. Additionally, we prefer a conditioning modality that does not interfere with strength training, as aerobics and long slow distance clearly do. A modality that works the high intensity end of the energy spectrum and is composed of simple, repetitive, easy to master, relatively low impact movement patterns. Now, if you are training with the big lifts for strength to become a better boxer or rower, judica, gymnast, cross-country skier, or rock climber, you can still derive some benefit from conditioning work in the gym. But you are already engaged in high-intensity conditioning just by practicing your sport. These mixed anaerobic-aerobic activities condition athletes well, for the event and for life. But if, on the other hand, you are sedentary when you're not in the gym, or you're a walker or a golfer or a yogi, you probably do need more intense conditioning, and the modality to be used will be determined by the criteria we've just discussed. You can shriek all you want, but golfers and yogis just aren't as well conditioned as boxers, rowers, and rock climbers, and that's all there is to it. Given our criteria, we can establish a clear hierarchy for pure conditioning training modalities. And sleds are clearly the winner here. Why? Because they're safe, titratable, comprehensive, and so simple you could teach a lemur to use one. You just grab the handles, gird your loins, and push for the prescribed distance. Add weight and distance as necessary to engage progressive overload and make progress. The sled involves virtually no eccentric movement, hence almost no delayed soreness, and works the high intensity end of the bioenergetic spectrum, so it has minimal interference with strength training, if intelligently programmed. The stationary bike for high intensity intervals works almost as well, and is only slightly less preferable because we think it captures less muscle mass and is not a structural exercise. It doesn't really load the spine and hips. And it's boring. We call it the bike to nowhere. Ellipticals and stair steppers are different species, but in the same phylum, although harder to get to adequate intensities. And they also go nowhere. For general conditioning, everything else is also ran because 
nothing else really hits our criteria as a general conditioning prescription to the same extent as the sled. The rower is great, but it is not structural. It's a lot more complicated and skill dependent than it looks, and it has an eccentric component. Sprints and fartlek intervals and the like will do the trick, but they can lead to soreness and are less safe and titratable than sleds and bikes. Tabata intervals with barbells will condition you and also beat the hell out of you. We don't use them. Cleans and snatches for time a la CrossFit? That's crazy talk. For my own part, I use the sled, karate kata, and kickboxing rounds on the heavy bag. But that's also crazy talk, and I pay for my own mistakes with soreness and joint pain and time. Not ideal. But I love it. Which brings me to the unspoken criterion. You have to be willing to do it. Now, most people see the power of the sled. No soreness, sheer simplicity, and after 10 short minutes of sheer suckery, you're all through. Thank goodness. It's not fun, but it's done. And while your muscles will be burning right now, they'll be fine after a post-workout meal, and they won't be sore tomorrow, from the sled anyway. You don't have to train with Burgess Meredith or a crazy old kung fu monk on a mountain for 10 years to learn to do it, and you're not going to fall in a ravine, twist an ankle, break a wrist, or drop a heavy barbell in your lap. The sled really is ideal. But if you just can't stand it, there are other options available. Your coach will teach you to use the bike to nowhere, the rower, or maybe even some heavy bag combinations if you want to learn. Or else you can take your strength to the dojo, the track, the climbing gym, or the like. Find a high-intensity conditioning modality or high-intensity sport that you love, or at least that you will do consistently, and then stick with it. Then you'll have the entire package, a complete exercise prescription for aging, a program of strength and conditioning that will make you stronger, more useful, and harder to break. That's the barbell prescription. Keep watching. We've got more great content to keep you strong and healthy coming right up.